Hello, welcome to the virtual college fair for all Virginia students sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. If your question is for one specific school, go ahead and name the school in your question so they know it's for them. Your cameras and microphones are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening. Be sure to check out the full schedule at strivescan.com slash Virginia, including panels next week, as well as other sessions like this. And this presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week, again, at the same website, strivescan.com slash Virginia. We are in session A3. You can see me moving my mouse around in a circle over that uh, list of schools that are presenting. So that will be the order of our presentations from our various representatives today during this session. I've gotten all the housekeeping stuff out of the way, so I will step out of the way, turn it over to our first representative from Ursinus College. Great, thank you so much. All right, well, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, my name is Brendan Doherty. I am the admissions representative here at Ursinus College. What happened to my screen? Sorry about that. Okay, great. Uh, all right, so about Ursinus College, we are a small liberal arts institution located in Collegeville, Pennsylvania. We're about 45 minutes outside of Center City, Philadelphia. Uh, we have 1,500 undergraduate students, strictly undergraduate students. We are one of the 44 colleges that change lives. The College that Change Lives is a nonprofit organization that takes a look at institutions across the nation and identifies ones with high levels of academics as well as strong student faculty relationships. So you guys know that when you come here, you're gonna get a great college education and the faculty members are fantastic. Uh, because of our small size, you're gonna make awesome relationship with, uh, relationships with them. You can get to know them on a personal level and they get to know you on that same personal level. Now there's over 60 different courses of study with our most popular majors being biology, applied economics, psychology, health and exercise physiology, and then neuroscience and media communication studies is tied for fifth. All accepted students are awarded a merit scholarship and here at Ursinus we offer some really great merit scholarships. Uh, starts with our Ursinus scholarship which is between $21,000 and $30,000 a year. The next scholarship is the Reverend Rice Memorial Scholarship. This is given to students who can show us impacted issues of diversity. So if you are going out in your community and enacting some sort of social change, you can self-nominate yourself on the application. The Gateway Scholarship is our most popular scholarship. This is given to students who earn a 3.85 GPA or higher, scored a 1250 on their SAT or 28 on their ACT. And then the Zacharias Honors is given to the top 5% of the applying class, and that is for $40,000 a year. Now we also offer some really great specialty scholarships. The difference between the specialty scholarships and the merit-based scholarships are that you do have to outside apply for those specialty scholarships. Now can't, uh, college definitely isn't all lectures, labs, and libraries. We definitely want you guys to have some fun while you're here. Uh, it starts with our housing. We do have a four-year housing requirement. We believe that having our students on campus for all four years gets you more um, engaged with your academics, your clubs and organizations, things like that. But with that, we also will guarantee housing we want you to be on campus, so we're gonna make sure that you have a place to stay. Uh, we have a bunch of different residency options, whether that be upperclassmen dorms, first year dorms, suite style dorms, and we also do own 22 Victorian style houses that line our main street. So over 100 clubs and organizations for students to get involved in, whether that be major related clubs, interest related clubs, fraternities and sororities, you name it, we have it. Our experiential learning project is a really great highlight of our um, academics here. Students have to, have to uh, complete at least one experiential learning project. Usually they choose between um, student research, internships, or study abroad. We are a division three school. We compete in the Centennial Conference. We have 25 varsity sports teams. About 37% of our student population are varsity athletes. So what is next? Uh, so our application is open right now. We're on the Common App and the Coalition App. It is free for our students to apply. Uh, so please, please, please take advantage of that. We have some upcoming events. We have a fall open house coming up on October 24th, this Saturday. It's going to be virtual, uh, but it's going to be a really great opportunity for you guys to connect with current faculty, staff, and students uh, with some different applications you can apply for. Early action. This is our non-binding early application. That deadline is coming up November 1st, quickly approaching. 
Uh, so we would love to see some applications come in. Early decision, which is our binding application, that closes December 1st and February 1st. Our regular decision app closes February 1st as well. We have some, all, uh, some virtual interactions and visit opportunities for you, whether that be an information session um, for seniors in the crowd. Uh, we do offer interviews. They are recommended, not required as a part of our application process. We have fellow Fridays, which is a way for you to connect with current seniors. And we're open. Come visit us. We'd love to see you come visit campus. All of our students are back on campus. Uh, and we have been seeing families, prospective students and their families on campus since July 1st. So if you haven't had the chance to come up, we'd absolutely love to see you. Uh, and then contact me. Here's my contact information. Um, please reach out. Love, you know, please don't be shy. I'm here to help. So if you guys have any questions moving forward, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much. Brendan, thank you very much. And I want to remind everyone, use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions for any of our presenters. And if it is for a specific school, please name the school in your question so the representative knows it is for him or her. Up next, the representative for, from Johnson and Wales University. Hi, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen quickly with you. All right. Good evening. My name is Stacey Thomas, and I am the regional admissions representative for Johnson & Wales University that handles Northern Virginia and the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. Um, so I just want to say thank you, first of all, for joining us. Um, Johnson & Wales is not located in Virginia. We have two campuses. Um, we are located in Providence, Rhode Island and Charlotte, North Carolina. And if you're accepted to Johnson & Wales, you're actually accepted to both campuses. You can study between the two campuses if you so choose, um, as long as your major is offered there. The, um, I would say the hallmark of a Johnson & Wales education is really learning by doing, um, experiential education, getting in there and learning outside of the classroom. And so one of the ways that we do that is through our learning labs. And you can see a few of them pictured here. And in high school, you might be thinking, well, my labs are for science classes. Well, at Johnson & Wales, they're for all of our classes. So whether you're a finance major or you can see our criminal justice majors are um, processing evidence in that lab um, or our sports entertainment event management or even in Charlotte, our sustainable food systems um, students are learning from our urban garden. So we're always trying to help you master the technology that you need uh, when you leave us and enter your field. Um, small class sizes is the hallmark at Johnson & Wales, about 35 students in your classes, 16 to 18 in your labs. And our, our faculty are, um, they're exceptional. They come to us having done what they're teaching in the real world. So they really connect students back out to the real world um, through what they're teaching in the classrooms. And finally, I will say something that makes Johnson & Wales a little bit unique is that we allow students to study in their major their very first semester on campus. So you will dive right into your program of study right away. We have about 70 different programs that span business, um, the health sciences, um, engineering and design, um, and we have some advanced programs. So you can get a five-year master's, for example, um, in business, or we have a three plus three law program with Roger Williams University. So definitely check out our academic programs. And I would say in Virginia, one of the things we're really well known for is our um, global reputation when it comes to culinary education. And we've rebranded that to now be the College of Food Innovation and Technology. So students who are interested in food, whether it be in the business side um, or the entrepreneurial side or perhaps um, food science or product development, you're really going to learn and analyze the impact that food has on all of us as a society and as a world. 97.7% uh, of our students have jobs or go to the next level um, in their professional program when they leave us. Um, and 71% of our students have job offers after their internships. Getting involved outside of the classroom, um, there's plenty of opportunities with clubs, organizations, intramurals, and then of course our athletics programs. We are 
D3 up in Providence and the, these sports that you can see here where I've broken it out by campus and USCAA um, in Charlotte. In terms of residential life, um, we have the traditional hall style, suite style, apartment style living. We also offer pet friendly dorms and students can bring their cars um, their very first year if you choose to do so. Um, I'll also mention that we ask our students to live on campus for the first two years at Johnson & Wales. In terms of applying, you can um, either apply directly on our website or you can apply um, by the common application. We still mail paper applications if anyone needs one. Um, and we are truly test optional. Um, this is not new for us. We've been test optional. Um, and if you want to send a personal statement, an essay or any teacher recs, that's fine, um, but they're not required. Our early action deadline is coming up on November 1st. Our regular decision deadline, March 1st. And finally, in terms of affordability, about 94% of our students are receiving financial aid and scholarships. And we award those merit-based scholarships through our admissions process. So when we notify students of their admissions decision, we're also notifying them about these awards. Um, in addition, we of course would love to see your FAFSA so that we can see if any need-based aid can be awarded as well. We are open for on-campus visits. We also have opportunities to engage with us through our virtual events. Um, we have programs designed just for certain majors. We have university open houses that we're offering virtually. And we even have some fun cook-alongs. So even if you're not looking to be a part of the food scene in college, if you just want something fun to do during the pandemic, please join us and cook along. For more information, feel free to scan this QR code. This is a way for you to keep up with these events and new programs that we're offering, as well as any application deadlines that we want to make you aware of. Okay. And finally, this is my contact information. As I mentioned, I cover Northern Virginia, the Shenandoah Valley, down to Charlottesville and Roanoke. And my wonderful colleague, Marisa Marcy, covers the Eastern Shore, Virginia, and Hampton Roads. So please feel free to reach out to either of us if you have any questions. Stacy, thank you very much. And again, if you have questions during the session, use the Q&A button to ask questions of any of our presenters. And if it's for a specific one, please make sure to name that person or the school in your question. Up next, we will hear from the representative from Randolph-Macon College. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Kellen Moody. I am the Associate Director of Admissions at randolph macon College, and I'm really excited to be able to speak with you uh, tonight. So go ahead and getting started. randolph macon we are a small liberal arts and sciences college located in Ashland, Virginia. Very centralized location within Virginia. We're about 15 minutes north of Richmond and 90 miles uh, south of Washington, DC. So right there in the middle of the state, really great location. Um, being bookended by our state's capital and nation's capital when it comes to internships and professional development. We were founded in 1830. Uh, and a little bit about our um, student body, we are just over 1,500 um, total student enrollment that we are solely undergraduate. A little bit of breakdown about our student body, we are 53-47 male-female ratio, and we're about 78-22 in-state, out-of-state. Of our out-of-state students, we are pulling from 30 different states and 20 different nations. So we do have a really nice, well-rounded student body with students coming to us from all over. And then we um, do have 23% uh, of our students do identify as racially diverse on our campus. Moving into a little bit about our academics, um, we are a liberal arts and sciences college, like I mentioned earlier. We have a really wide variety of majors. We have over 50 majors, minors, and pre-professional programs. Really something for everyone, something starting from um, our archaeology major down to our new nursing school, um, an engineering major, education, uh, as well as our new major, cybersecurity, that we have on campus, and behavioral neuroscience, which is a really unique um, major for a school of our size. Um, it's very common to see students decide to double major or double minor, so that's definitely an option for you graduating on time should you decide to do that as well. 
And then we do also, in terms of our pre-professional programs, we have a really um, renowned pre-med program where we have um, guaranteed partnerships with uh, three different medical schools. A little bit about our classroom structure and our classroom style. Uh, we do like to keep to the small class sizes. We have an 11 to one student faculty ratio. Our average class size is 16. We do like to cap them at about 25, 30 max. Um, and that really lends itself to a, a very enriched educational experience that you're gonna be able to have in the classroom. A lot less lecture based and a lot more um, uh, discussion based. And you're also gonna be able to build some really strong uh, fantastic relationships with your professors that it's going to extend even outside of the classroom when it comes time to getting those um, great research, research opportunities as well as internship opportunities, having um, your faculty member there for you and build, being able to have those relationships is really going to help you. A very popular area of interest at Randolph-Macon is our study abroad courses. As you can see there, 35% of our students decide to study abroad at some point during their time at Randolph-Macon which is much higher than the 10% um, national average. And that's in large part because we offer a couple of different ways for our students to study abroad, but the most popular way comes through our 414 academic calendar system. Um, we are one of the few schools in the state of Virginia that offers this, but we actually have three semesters each year as opposed to the traditional two. Um, so in between the fall and spring semester, we do have a one month semester in between, which is always during the month of January. We refer to it as our January term or J term for short. And this, we offer a few different options that we don't necessarily offer in the fall and spring semester. Uh, one of those is an on-campus intensive study. The second option you can choose from is an internship for the entire month. And then the third option I've already mentioned, um, very popular option is our study abroad courses for that month. We do also have a really uh, renowned uh, career center on our campus. It's called the Edge Career Center, and it's actually been ranked uh, 13th in the nation just recently. We're very excited about that. Uh, this is a four year, very intentional program that gets our students to start thinking about things in their freshman and sophomore year, as opposed to waiting until your junior or senior year. Um, it's really what they say is the application to your education, making sure that you're prepared um, for that uh, internship interview or for that life after college, whether that's going on to graduate school or getting that first um, career uh, job. Uh, they really are working with you starting from the very beginning in your first year all the way through all four years. A little bit about our campus life. Uh, we do have over 100 clubs and organizations to get involved in. We also have 13 Greek organizations available. Um, so lots of opportunities there. We are a 90% residential campus, guaranteed housing all four years. So most students are living on campus all, all four years. Um, so that does uh, lend why we have 14 different types of residence halls suite style, community style, apartments, townhouses, and actual houses on campus for our students to choose from. We are NCAA Division III Athletics in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. We offer 18 varsity sports, men's and women's. And then we do also have two club sports, a cheer and dance team, as well as an equestrian team, which both compete very successfully at the collegiate level as well. Moving on to our application process, you can apply uh, two different ways. For Randolph-Macon, we do have an uh, application that you can access directly through our website, or we are also members of the common application should you decide to um, apply that way. Regardless of how you apply, it is free to apply. Early action deadline is November 15th. Regular decision is March 1st. Um, we take a very holistic approach to our application review. One thing I do want to note is we have moved to test optional for this year. Um, so if you aren't able to take that test or should you decide to not submit that, you do not have to. Uh, we will still consider you for both admittance into the college as well as merit-based scholarships. And speaking of our merit-based scholarships, we have three merit-based scholarships ranging from 20,000 all the way up to full tuition scholarships. And of course, encouraging our families to fill out the FAFSA, which you can do if you are a senior beginning now. And we are also open on our campus. We offer on-campus tours for our students um, if you'd like to come visit us, but we do have a number of virtual opportunities as well. And here is my contact information. Should you have any other questions or want to follow up with me, please do so. Thank you all. Thank you very much. I'll leave that up for a second or two as uh, I remind everyone once again, use the Q&A button for questions for any of our representatives this evening. Uh, and if your question is for a specific school, again, make sure to name that school in your question so that they know it is for them.
remind everyone the schedule of our presenters coming up and right now will be the representative from James Madison University. Hello, everyone. I hope you all can hear me. Um, I am going to share my screen with you all uh, so that you can see more about JMU and understand what JMU has to offer for everyone. Okay. So James Madison University here in Harrisonburg, Virginia, in the beautiful Tiffany, I wanna, Sorry to, to jump in real quick, but it, we're still seeing the, the screen as if you're working within the PowerPoint so we can see the notes and everything, as opposed to seeing the actual the presentation. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. You may need to re-share with that window. Yes. Okay, is this better? I hope everybody can see. Uh, what I, not, I don't think you're sharing anything right now. I do apologize for the technical difficulties, but I do wanna continue just so that you have the information about James Madison University. And I, as I said, apologize, but I want to let you know that here at JMU, we are a liberal arts institution and we are easily accessible off of Interstate 81 and it's a beautiful drive to JMU's campus. We have a number of traditions here that our students enjoy and love being a part of. Um, one thing that I want to let you know of right now is that we have around 19,800 um, students in our undergraduate degrees, specifically in our both undergraduate and graduate, we have over 22,000 students attending. Now we are an in-state in uh, public institution. So we do have a 76 to 24 in-state out-of-state ratio. We are a division one NCAA sports school. We also have over 164 different majors for all of our students to be a part of. Now, all of our majors are broken up into specific colleges. So when you apply to James Madison University, you are going to apply to the entire James Madison University um, community. So just determining on which specific area you would like to go into, you can find that within the breakdown of the different colleges. Now, going through um, the application process, JMU does offer an early action process, which is non-binding, and the deadline for the early action is going to be November 15th. We also have our regular decision, which the deadline is going to be February 1st. We do primarily look at your grades and your academic classes that you've taken in high school. And we too are a test optional 
um, institutions. So if you've already taken your SATs or ACTs, then that's wonderful. You can definitely send it to us. However, you can successfully go through the admissions process without submitting your standardized test scores. We are, as I said, focused on your core academic classes, and we are focused on the grades that you receive in those core classes, along with the challenging curriculum that you're in, whether you've taken honors, AP or IB, as well as dual enrollment. So definitely make sure that you have a competitive um, transcript in order to be considered for admission. Here at JMU, we do accept the FAFSA for all of our students who are going through the application process, as well as all of our returning JMU students in order to uh, um, be qualified for financial aid assistance. We uh, here at JMU also look at your um, eligibility for merit-based scholarships and also need-based scholarships. So we do have scholarships available at JMU and you can always access this information from our jmu.edu website. So what you should know about JMU is that we are a community for all students who want to study and want to be successful. We work with each other, we take care of each other, and we also um, look out for each other. So we know how important security is for all of our students. So we work with a number of, um, of resources in order to make sure that everybody that is associated with JMU is safe and secure. JMU, as I said before, is a wonderful campus to come and visit. I hope that you all can schedule a trip to this university before you even be, become accepted to JMU. We are too open. We have our entire month of October for our academic open house. You can go to jmu.edu in order to access that information. Thank you. Thank you very much. And again, I'll remind everyone that use the Q&A for questions for any of our representatives during this session. Up next, we'll hear from a representative from St. Mary's College of Maryland. Oops. There we go. Hi, everybody. I am Dina Kelly from the Office of Admission over in St. Mary's uh, College of Maryland. We're about 90 minutes from Washington, D.C., so not too far from where you are in Virginia. We are originally on the uh, Piscataway Con excuse me, Conoy tribe lands uh, founded in the 1600s and we were a university about 200 years after that. We are a national public honors college. We have liberal arts and sciences as our programs and we have about 75 academic programs. We offer excellence for everyone. We are rigorous and relevant education and have the prestige without the exclusiveness of a private college. We have our learning through experiential and applied discovery or lead curriculum. Um, as some of my colleagues spoke to earlier, you have the opportunity at their schools, just like at ours, to apply what you're learning. You don't always have that practical application in your high school classes. And at St. Mary's College of Maryland, you'll have that. You can see um, one of our science labs here. We have actually um, a couple of them. We have a wet lab. We are right on a river. And so there's uh, opportunity for environmental studies and uh, lots of doing science. Dina, I'm sorry to interrupt real quick, but uh, you're not actually sharing your screen. I wasn't sure if you had meant to, but yeah, you referred I to something and it wasn't there. So obviously. Yeah, I clicked that earlier, so I'm not sure why. Okay, sorry about that. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, sorry folks. That's All right. So um, I talked about our lead discovery or learning through experiential and applied, uh, applied discovery. Our honors college promise is what I was just getting to with um, the guaranteed opportunity to participate in undergraduate research 
or in a meaningful internship. Many of our students do both. Um, and we also offer study abroad to students that want to participate in that. We have about 25 schools uh, globally that we work with um, in a variety of major programs. It could be a month long study tour. It could be a week long study tour. It could be a semester or longer. We have 75 academic programs, including double and interdisciplinary majors for students to partake in. We also have some pre-professional programs as well. So we're not all about uh, work on campus. You have to find that balance between work and play. We have about 70 um, student-led organizations and clubs. We have club sports. We also have division three athletics as well. We have 19 sports at the moment and we're adding track and field in the coming school year. So um, as some of my colleagues referred to their campuses being open, we also are open right now. We have students living on campus that are participating in courses during um, the school year and also uh, they could be studying virtually. They had the opportunity to do both. Right now we have about 900 students on campus and typically we have about 1500 in our um, all, all admitted students. Um, so for your first year applicants, we are expecting a high school transcript, your secondary school report, which your counselor sends, two letters of recommendation, an essay, and a supplemental essay. We are test optional. We had decided that well before COVID happened, but um, you can submit test scores, but you do not have to. Uh, like I said, we have some personal um, or in-person or virtual visits are both happening right now. You can um, set up a counselor conversation with any of our faculty um, or staff, and you can also come on campus one family at a time. We offer daily visits and some weekends as well. So your early decision application is due November 1st with a December 1st decision. Your early action is November 1st with a January 1st uh, decision, and that is not a binding decision. And then your regular decision is January 15th with an April 1st notification, and that also is non-binding. So 94% of our fall 2020 class received some kind of scholarship or grant fund from uh, St. Mary's College of Maryland. We do uh, recommend students submit FAFSA, which obviously you already know opened for this coming school year on October 1st. Uh, Virginia and Maryland residents both have to apply by March 1st. For the third year in a row, we have the lowest student indebtedness from all public and private Maryland schools. And our outcome rate is 94%. So that incoming class of 2019, excuse me, that graduating class from 2019, 94% of them had gone on to either grad school or been gainfully employed or went on to some kind of service academy. I want to share our contact information. Um, Jordan Cartwright is the Virginia rep for first year students and I'm the rep for transfer students. His contact information is right there and you can definitely reach out to him via email or you can call and leave him a voicemail or text that number. Thank you so much for your time and I hope to see your application soon. Thank you. Thank you very much and want to make sure Everyone remembers, use the Q&A button to ask questions of any of our presenters throughout this session. You can do that at any time. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Marist College. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Jesse Mungin. I am one of, uh, sorry, I am the regional admission counselor at Marist College. I am also alum of the college. I graduated in 2011 with my degree in criminal justice and a minor in psychology. Um, I've been working for the college for the past eight years in a bunch of different capacities, um, but it is my pleasure uh, this evening to talk to you about Marist. Uh, Marist is a uh, private liberal arts college. Uh, we're located in Poughkeepsie, New York, which is about an hour and a half north of New York City, hour and a half south of Albany. Um, we're nestled right in between, right on the banks of the Hudson River. It uh, provides our students with a lot of opportunities in our local area. And then um, there's a lot of easy transportation to those two larger cities where students also get to take advantage of a, a lot. 
Um, we are a mid-size um, uh, institution. We have just uh, over 5,000 undergraduate students on our campus. Um, they are studying over 40 different majors. There's a lot of flexibility for students to pursue what they want um, in terms of double majoring, um, having two or three minors, some of our certificate programs, and the option for uh, some accelerated uh, dual degrees where students can get a bachelor's and master's within five years. Um, we have students coming from uh, 47 different states, 64 different countries, and um, our class sizes are typically pretty small, 18 to 26 students on average. Uh, the largest class that we have on our campus is 35 students. Um, all of our classes are taught by faculty. There's no graduate assistants, teaching assistants, um, and there's a lot of support for our students on our campus. Um, we do have housing available for all four years for students. It is guaranteed for the first two years. 96% um, of our uh, first year students do live on our campus. And then our students leave our campus and go on and do great things. So 98% uh, of them are employer attending graduate school six months after graduation. As far as programs, this is uh, everything that we have. Uh, when you apply to Marist, you are applying to the school as a whole. So you are uh, allowed to take classes within um, the, the entire school. There's only two programs that you need to uh, submit a portfolio before you, well, two, two programs that you have to submit a portfolio before you start taking classes in. And that's our, one, our fashion design program and one of our studio art programs. Um, everything else, you, you do have the uh, freedom and flexibility to take classes that interest you. As far as the academic experience, it is hands-on. Um, a lot of uh, experimental learning. Uh, we want our students to have uh, uh, internship level experiences on, their, on our campus before they leave and, and head out to do an internship uh, research project or study abroad. Um, so we constantly are upgrading our spaces to provide those types of experiences for our students. Um, and then our students take advantage of um, our proximity to New York City and Albany and head to those two locations typically to do uh, internships. Uh, we have a lot of uh, support for students to, to gain internships, to, uh, to, to seek it out. So 83% of our students complete at least one. Many go on to do more. Um, as far as research, any student can start as early as their first year and then study abroad. We have a, a bunch of different options from spending your entire first year in Florence, Italy or Dublin, Ireland um, to doing uh, semester programs all across the, the globe. Uh, we actually have an, a campus in Florence, Italy as well. So we actually offer bachelor's degrees there for uh, students who are interested. Um, we have an active and involved student body on our campus. Um, there's a bunch of different clubs and organizations that students get involved in and they plan their own activities and events. Um, but we also have uh, uh, campus-wide events and, and offices that provide different activities. So it's not a place that students typically get bored. Uh, students don't typically go home on the weekends. Uh, there, there's just so much happening. And uh, we are division one um, for sports. We play in the MAC conference. As far as applying, uh, we are on the Common App. We're on the My Coalition application, and we have our own application. We have zero preference. I think 95% of the students who apply use the Common App because they're applying to other schools on it, and it makes sense. Uh, we just want to be extremely accessible and offer different options. Um, the deadlines for us are November 15th, February 1st, March 1st. So uh, we do have early decision and early action. Uh, we um, have two early decision processes. Uh, they work exactly the same. They're the binding agreement. And then the earlier uh, early action for earlier notification, regular decision um, is March 1st. Uh, this is kind of the numbers that we are looking for for students. We do take a holistic approach when reviewing applications. Uh, we look at everything you're doing outside of the classroom. Also, what types of classes you're taking more uh, years in the core subject areas are great for us. And then we want to see students who are challenging themselves if their schools offer the ability for them to do that. Um, we are test optional and have been for over 10 years now. So um, it, it is not something that you must submit to get acceptance or receive scholarship. Um, and just from applying, you are eligible for uh, uh, merit-based scholarship. 
just a few more things to wrap up here. Um, we are open for visits. 90% of our, our classes are in person right now. So we do have uh, visits available, but we also have a bunch of virtual visits available for students as well. Um, so please go on our website and check that out. And this is my contact information. Again, I'm the regional representative um, in Virginia. Um, so please reach out to me if you have any questions after this, if you don't get to type it in the Q&A. Thank you so much. Jesse, thank you. And I will uh, ask again if anyone has questions, use the Q&A button. I'll ask each of our representatives to turn their cameras or microphones back on and come back in. Uh, we're going to do, we have about five minutes left. Uh, so we'll just do a quick Q&A, just one question. If for no other reason, I like to pretend like I'm a talk show host. But really, it's to actually add a little more information and be uh, campus specific and I think and what we'll do is we'll have you answer in the same order that you presented and I'll uh, still uh, mention each school so that you know um, who I'm <laughs> expecting to answer but the question I have just for each of you maybe about 20 to 30 seconds is your favorite campus tradition or school tradition um, something that will allow our attendees either live or on the recording to um, you know find out a little bit more about ca your campus uh, vibe and everything. So we'll start with Ursinus College. Sure, all right, great. Um, so I am actually pretty new to Ursinus. So I've only been here for a few months. Uh, so I actually haven't been able to get a full feel of what Ursinus is like yet. But the one thing that I keep hearing uh, is the air band competition is like out of this world. So I'm hoping, you know, COVID kind of moves its way out because I'm, I'm looking real forward to uh, enjoying an air band uh, pr uh, presentation. Um, so at Johnson and Wales, um, a lot of our students, we were actually founded as a business school. So a lot of our students are interested in business and um, particularly entrepreneurship, we have a lot of students that have this like passion or this dream and they come to us and they wanna put that together. So we do, um, if you're familiar with Shark Tank, we do Shark Fest. So our students can actually compete for a grant to start their business while they're at Johnson & Wales. Um, I believe the prizes break down, like first prize is 5,000, um, second place is 2,500 and then um, $1,000 prizes for third through fifth place. But um, through the mentoring that we offer through our entrepreneurial center, um, these students can actually get a jump start on their career while they're in college. Sounds cool. Uh, Randolph Macon College. So one of my favorite traditions that we have at our campus is called the game. Um, we have a very big rivalry uh, that goes on. It's actually been dubbed the oldest small school rivalry in the South. Um, and it is between us and another institution that's located in Virginia. And um, we go head to head with them for all of our sports, but the game refers to the football game that we play against them every year. We um, swap back and forth, depending if it's home or away. And, um, and we, it's kind of right up there with our homecoming game, sometimes even bigger, um, but we have whole weeks leading up to the actual game that Saturday, and we have the game ball trophy that we pass back and forth each year, depending on who won. And we have actually housed it on our campus, its rightful home, for the past five years in a row, which is pretty exciting. Fantastic. James Madison University. So I would have to say that our favorite, our famous um, tradition is going to be holding doors. JMU students, regardless of what their schedules are and where they're going, once they get into a building or they're coming out of a building, they make sure that they hold the doors for the person behind them. It also doesn't even matter how close or how far you are. They're going to stand there and hold those doors for you all. So that is a famous tradition of JMU. Fantastic. St. Mary's College of Maryland. So being right on the water, one of the um, favorite activities is to have a crab feast that is associated with our alumni weekend. Um, you know, we're right on the river. There's a lot of crabbing in our area. So those Maryland blue crabs are very tasty. And um, one of the traditions is to have a crab feast every year. Cool. Let's uh, wrap this up with uh, Marist College. Um, my... Uh, one of my favorite uh, 
traditions on campus at, towards the end of the school year, right before finals week, we have something called Fox Fest. Um, Maris is home of the, the Red Foxes. Um, so we just have this giant celebration to kind of celebrate the school year and then um, send our students off and uh, to, to finish their finals in great spirits and moods. And there's usually fireworks and DJ and all that stuff too. Excellent. Well, thank you to each of you for sharing the uh, wonderful traditions and uh, fun stuff on your campuses for each of your schools. And also thank you for presenting this evening during this session. I wanna thank all of our attendees for joining us to listen to these presentations and remind you that when you close this window, there'll be a link to a very qu quick four question survey. We appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted tonight. And there are even more next week as far as panels go. So be sure to sign up for additional ones at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Virginia. Once again, thank you to our panelists for joining us and presenting this evening and uh, have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday night. Thank you very much. <laughs>